Yeah, but it's not meant to do that. I think that could be broken. Hi guys, Lee here. Welcome back to the channel and you join me today as we're going to have a look at another one of my purchases. Now this time it's a 2007 Audi A4 Avant estate car, which I have bought for £900. Now I bought this off a dealer. I bought it. He's, take, he's taken the car in part exchange uh, and I was, basically it was a case of it's £900, take it or leave it type scenario. To be honest with you, pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'd like to get it a little bit cheaper. We, we all do. But in reality, it's pretty fair price for an old A4 Avant. So the car's been dropped off to us. It's been brought here to the garage, the workshop. Uh, the guy who dropped it off actually said there was a few issues when he drove it. It was a bit wandery all over the road and some noises. So we are going to have to look at that and address them. Uh, and I do know from a quick flip round it, but it is going to need one or two issues on the body. So we're going to have to address them as well. But I think there's plenty of margin left in this car. They usually sell really, really well. I do like buying the A4s, particularly the Avant State car. Uh, they're just really popular and always sell well, even older versions like this. So hopefully we can turn this into a profit. Let's go and have a look around it, see what we need to do to it, get a list together and work out what we're going to do with this car and hopefully we can turn it around and sell it for some profit. So let's go have a look. Right, here it is, the old uh, Audi A4 in the blue. Nice colour. I always liked the A4 Avant. They were an attractive looking car, the B7. So let's get in straight into it. We've got a few little marks here. They'll probably, most of them will probably come out to be fair with a bit of T-cut or certainly improve. Again, a little bit of rust and corrosion appearing on the old uh, arches there. Very common, unfortunately, on the V-dubs of this era. Golfs in particular, they used to corrode really back badly on the actual main part of the body of the wing, but just a little bit on the arch there, but a little bit superficial. Could be rectified if you wanted it to. Again, marks consistent really all over the car, to be fair. This this car could really do with a, a mopping all over. We'd make a mass fast improvement because we've just got little marks all past here. We know it's been brushed past all the hedges and stuff. So a uh, mopping all over and a polish would uh, improve this massively. Moving on to the doors. I mean, scratches aside, which most of them will come out. We're pretty straight. Scuff here, to be honest. Most of that will probably come out as well. A little tiny bit there probably will have to be improved. You could probably touch it in just to take your eye off it. We have to remember, guys, it is an old car, so we are going to have a few marks on it. Wheels pretty much consistent like this one to be fair on the back here we've got budget tyre 5 mil on it I'd say little tiny bit perish not too bad front one on it a little bit worse to wear that that's pretty much on its bars that needs a tyre that is completely down to the bars in the middle there it's on, on the 1.6 so definitely going to need a new tyre on it 225 45 sorry 235 45 17 not sure we've got any of them we might have to buy a new one for that uh, moving on to the back Things don't look good here, to be fair. We've got a lot of paint flick, flick coming off. It could really do with a painted bumper, or ideally, I mean, this is quite a common colour in the A4 Avant, this was. Probably just try and get hold of a second-hand bumper. Not quite sure what's happened here. It's like someone's thrown nitromorphs all over it or something. It's it's quite bad, really. I mean, it's had a bit of an impact there as well, and that's took that paint off, but it doesn't really explain what the rest of it's all coming off. Whether it's been a bad paint job or some of substance has gone on it and just made it worse for wear, it's in need of a bumper really to tidy it up. So you say paint that, or ideally, cheaper option would be just to get a bumper. I think 100 and 150 quid would probably get you an half tidy bumper in colour. It'd be a lot cheaper than having it painted. Tailgate's okay though, for what it's worth. Uh, badges as well, I've never noticed. Truly a TDI S line. Yeah, it's not an S line model. Um, someone's put them on. As you'll see inside, it's clearly not an S line. But moving on to the back, quarter, a little few marks there, but is is what it is. Tire on the back, Black Lion budget tire. Uh, pretty much knew that. About eight mil on it. Discs are a little bit scored up, but it has been laid up for a while, so that's not really a fair assessment. We'd have to get up in the air and actually see what they're like on the inside and see how they clean up when we drive it before we sort of make judgment on them discs. Door's pretty straight actually, no dents on it, but again, just marks everywhere. It's just a really scratched up car that really will benefit from a good mopping over. So, moving on to the passenger side, nice and straight out to the passenger, it's probably the best panel on the car. Uh, and onto the wing, we've got a little bit going on this arch again, it's a shame really, um, but like you said, it's 140 foul. You're going to have a few marks on it. It's dead common to see corrosion on these areas of Volkswagens and Audis and Skodas, etc. They just seem to always go on these arches. But um, they could be improved if you wanted it to be. I mean, will we improve it? Uh, maybe. Might go to the benefit. Might go as far as putting some arches on it and try and get a second hand bumper potentially if it, uh, the rest of it stacks up. Uh, tire on the front there. 
that's pretty low as well it's awful condition it's really badly perished it's got a few cuts on it and it's yeah that's on the bars as well that's below limit so we're looking at two tyres as well guys on it as well so we've got to weigh all that up I mean it's a scruffy thing really for its age but it will improve a bumper and a good boff up really would improve it and then if you went to the length of doing the arches you would not have a bad looking car really and it's a nice colour um, well, let's have a look inside her we've got two keys I've noticed the central locking isn't working in either of them so we've either got two flat key batteries or something else going on so we'll have to check that out so as you can see it is no S line model uh, it's, I think it's an SE so it's uh, it's got a few little bits on it but it's uh, not an S line model they're just badges someone stuck on but uh, I mean for what it's worth clean actually really I mean it wants a valet obviously you can imagine most cars that come in parts chains want valets but no rips in the seats a good shampoo up of these and they'll come up nice so we're not going to torn or worn seats really even the bolsters aren't that bad we have got nav which is a nice touch uh, radio is working as well which is good i imagine the nav is completely out of date although it is uh, worked out where we are which is good uh, nice little entertainment screen on it as well that's all working this is good news as well because if that wasn't working that would uh, be a real shame and quite expensive to fix on an old car like this mileage wise we are on 141,000 miles we've got a service light that's just come up as well so we need to service it which we'll obviously we'll do if we sell it turn the key first turn of the key good old PD engine into life we've got no rattles at all on the dual mass when I'm pre pressing the clutch down which is great we've got no warning oh, sorry we have got a warning light on we've got an airbag light on we need to look at that to be honest, you're not too difficult to sort out until we like this. It'd probably just be a seat sensor or something. Um, but no engine management lights on, and it sounds right. Nice thing, I like, and I always like this era of Volkswagen engine they use. This the one nines and later the two liter PD engines they had. They were just a really good solid engine, quite powerful. You could tune them up as well. It was just a nice old thing, and in return, good miles to the gallon. And were quite nippy as well. They're quite a nippy engine. Even got a drop of diesel in there, which is nice. But like you said, over that airbag light on, nothing really too much going on uh, on the old warning light front to worry about. We've got electric windows all around, working. Yep. Four windows working, good start. Central locking is working on the button, it's just not on the keys. So I suspect the keys are just dead, as in the batteries in them. Hopefully that will solve that. Um, even the mirrors are, yeah, even the electric mirrors are, are even working, which is great. So in the inside, really, it's not too bad. We'll have a quick look at the back. A valet, really, would see the inside of this transformed. I say no rips, no tears. We've not had a big dog in it or out, which is good. You just want a, a nice valet. It just wants a 50 quid valet throwing at it, and it will uh, transform the car. Let's see if we can get the boot open. Nice touch that's still there. Oh, we've got a spare and it's an alloy as well. That's rare. The tire is absolutely shot on it. But that's a nice touch, really. How often do you ever see a spare alloy these days? I mean, now you don't even get a spare wheel. So you, get, you don't even get a spare space saver anymore in some cars. And give you that uh, tire inflator pack with the fluid, with the uh, solution in, with the fluid in. But uh, yeah, nice touch that. Having a fifth spare alloy, always useful. But like I said, inside here, it's actually quite straight, to be honest. I mean, it's, and we have got signs of a dog in here, actually. We've had dog hairs. Look at that. Wilfred's been in here. But it's not horrendous. I mean, it doesn't smell a dog around like that. So I'm happy about that. It's quite a straight thing, and it's just so practical as well, your van. Such a spacious boot on it. Just a really nice, classy car. Pop the bonnet. So there we go with 2 litre TDI version. So they ran these early ones in one nines, also later two litres as well. Good engine, strong, pull well. Don't give much chip to be honest with you. An engine that I like and good diesel engine of its era. 
battery doesn't look that old to be honest with you nice uasa battery decent battery as well put on it and not using any cheap nasty batteries which is a good sign we've got coolant in it which is always a good sign someone's been maintaining it oil well it's diesel it's gonna be black as out isn't it but we've got oil in it obviously we're gonna have to give this all a bit of a service get this cover off have a check round and make sure everything's all right and we'll just give it a general clean under the, under the air as well because it is a little bit aged so we say um little bits of notice not you can quite tell it's had a new uh, alternator belt and a new tension on it as well by the looks of it so they've obviously uh, had some work done recently on it right that's enough of that let's uh, get it rigged up uh, and go for a drive in it now my friend did warn me to be careful when driving it so obviously there is something wrong with this so we'll have a uh, see what's going on when we go drive it we'll have a quick just go around the site here and see what uh, see what's going on with it and then try and get in the workshop and uh, see what we need to do next but let's go drive it first see what it handles like let's get it rigged up and go for a drive hi guys just a quick message from today's product sponsor king bollen who have sent us out this the Creda 3001 now the Creda 3001 is a entry-level obd scanner which allows you to scan vehicles from 1996 onwards in order to obtain engine management fault codes p codes from the car it also does live data scanning and will also retrieve all types of vehicle information it's really simple to use simply just plug it in follow the instructions and in less than 30 seconds you will have the fault codes from the vehicle now i've been using this for over a week now testing it out and i have to say it's been absolutely faultless works exactly as it should the soft i'm not surprised because the software in this is actually from launch diagnostics launch diagnostics well known big diagnostic company who've been serving the industry for many many years so we know the software in this is actually spot on and does exactly what it's supposed to do so if you're after an entry level basic code scanner then this is the machine for you it's less than 29 pounds so it's a lot cheaper than going to visit a garage probably charge you 50 to 100 pounds just for scanning a car well you can do it yourself for less than 29 quid get yourself one of these guys check out the link in the description below it's got an off we've also got an offer on at the moment as well so check that out to get your latest discount on it it's a handy little bit of kit to have so get yourself one order today Right. Morrison's card or app. A very pretty. Fires into life. Okay, so I'm a little bit cautious about this because one of the lads has actually moved it from where it was around the corner to here. And he even said then that something doesn't feel right when he drives it. Let's go and have a drive anyway. Just I'm gonna go around the site, not gonna go on the main road or anything, and just see um what he's actually doing and then try and get on the ramp and actually see if we can try and diagnose what's wrong with this. So here we go. Let's it's fine into life, no problem there. So gears nice selecting fine, nothing wrong with that. Clutch is down now, it's going through all the gears fine. So we just put it into first now. We've got a nice bite on the clutch, halfway just where it should be. Steering does feel a little bit funny to be honest with you. Especially when you're going left, I've noticed. So we'll just go up this side track here. Oh wow. Okay, so it's not engine's pulling well and it's going and it's going through the gears fine. Brakes are all right, but it does veer to the right quite a lot. We just give it a little bit of a welly. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's not good. We've got a horrible clunking noise. We've got a horrible clunking noise coming from this passenger side here. Something's definitely going on there, and it's throwing the car to the right. So I suspect we've got something wrong with the wishbone arms that side because it is really, to be fair, it's quite uncontrollable to be honest with you. I can see what he mean when he drove this up here, why he was uh, in fear of his life. Oh yeah, it's horrible noise coming from that near side. Oh God, he's making a right banging noise. And even when you let go off the accelerator or change gear, it sort of does this with the steering and jolts it to the right. It's not pleasant to drive. It's just all over the place. I mean, I'm only driving 15, 20 mile an hour. Oh God, it's a clunk then as well. Around the site here. And it's it's not controllable. I mean, I wouldn't want to drive this on the road. I mean, fair play to him bringing it here because I mean, he's put his life in his hands because this is horrendous. Well, we're gonna have to check this out because obviously, you know, it could just be a case of warm wishbone arms or a snap spring or something like that. But it could be something more serious. You know, we don't know the history of this car. This could have been in an accident. It could have had damage to the wheel. It could have hit a curb. You don't know, it could have bent the steering rack. I mean, the steering wheel is out of shape as well. It's to the right here. Now that might just be down to tracking or it might not have anything to do with the steering rack, but we don't know is a simple answer. So we're gonna to have to check it out and see what's wrong with this car. So I'm not gonna drive us on the road, guys. I mean, 
I'm happy with the, the brakes, I'm happy with the clutch and the way it goes in gear, and the engine's pulling all right, it's just the suspension is just horrific, it is dangerous, um, and it's not safe to drive. So let's get it inside, jack it up and find out what's going on with this front end because from there we can work out what to do next because if there's something terribly wrong with this car we're going to need to weigh up the costings of it because like I said if we're going to start putting steering racks or there's a problem so it's bent or anything like that then really we're in trouble let's be let's be honest so let's get it in the workshop get it up in the air and see what the hell is going on with the suspension Okay, it's not too bad underneath here, to be honest with you. Got a lot of trays on the way though, so it covers a multitude of sins up. Um, we need to jack this front end up because we've got something wrong with the suspension. I've also had a knock in at the back as well. Um, I've had a quick nosy, I think I can see a rear broken spring. We'll try and get a better picture of that for you in a minute, but we've definitely got a knocking coming from this near side rear. So we might be looking at putting a spring on it. I mean, for 140,000 miles though, it's uh, not too bad under here. Like I said, these trays do so much to protect the car underneath from all the elements of the road. You know, it's, uh, it's why you see them so much on modern cars. I mean, they're a pain when you have to take them out of the way, like, but they do do a great help in the, sort of preventing corrosion and making them going horrible underneath. But uh, anyway, let's get this jacked up and uh, see what's going on with these suspension arms, because I suspect we've got a problem there. Near side's pretty solid. I suspect our problem, let's just check that spring actually on this side. Oh, the spring's okay. I suspect the problem's these top arms. Now this is the side that I think's got the issue. Let's see if you put this camera down. <laughs> it's got a wobble on it. Up and down, you have to do it from up and down. Yeah, it's not meant to do that. I think that could be broken. Okay, so we've had the Audi A4 on the ramp. I've checked it over. Let's go through what we're gonna to need to do to this car. First of all, we need to deal with why it's sort of veering all over the place. As we can see just a few moments ago on the ramp, the upper wishbone arms on the passenger side front are absolutely toast. I've never seen a set of wishbone arms like that where the upper wishbones and lit arms are literally just moving all over the place. I mean, not surprised why that car was driving all over the road. It's very dangerous and obviously it needs resolving straight away. So I've ordered a set of arms anyway. As soon as I did that, uh, as soon as I got it off the ramp, I ordered a set of arms for it. They're coming. Um, not too bad actually, the arms. I've ordered them online because they're quite expensive to buy from my local motor factors, but online relatively good price i've had a few of them before and i bought a few online before and actually had some good results so a uh, set of arms for that is about 53 quid i think it was uh, plus there's the pinch bolt that goes through the middle of it bit of a horrible job to do experience on them you know you have get them they have a come out first time or they break they're really difficult to sort of get out in one piece anyone knows who's done a set will know what i mean but anyway new set of pinch bolts ordered anyway they're about 10 quid for a pair and i say in the arms as well for 53 quid actually that is for a set of uh, both arms for each side so that is four arms we're getting for like 53 quid two for the near side and two for the off side i mean it'd be stupid not to change both sides while we're there like I said, there wasn't much play in the offsides, but they don't look like they've been changed recently. They do look quite old. They're going to go the same way. It'd be better off just to change it all in pairs, do the right thing, and obviously uh, do both sides. So we'll do that as well. Also, I noticed as well on the test drive, I didn't actually mention it at the time, but I also heard it when I went on the ramp as well. There's a noise coming from uh, the back of the car, like a coil spring. Uh, I put it on the check, the ramp checked over. And like we saw, we actually did find the broken spring. It was a little bit tricky to find it first, but I knew it was broken. You could just hear it. Like I said, a bit of a, a bit of wiggling around with the mirror. I managed to get a shot of it for the camera of a, a piece of broken spring at the bottom there, which was clanging about when we went over the speed bumps and potholes around the site. So I say, new spring order. That's about 25 quid for a new spring. Quite straightforward to do. In less than half an hour, we can have that spring in and done. So obviously, we'd look to fix that as well. Obviously, the car's going to need a service as well. We're not going to have really much history on it. So we'll have to do, do a service on it. Might have to look at checking the belt as well, see what the history is on that. 
there has been some engine work on it. I can see on the front of the engine there's been a been an auxiliary belt change and a tensioner. Hopefully it might have been when a cam belt's been off. Maybe they've done that as well, but you don't know. Maybe it hasn't. So we'll have to take off that cam cover and have a look and see what state the belt's in. If we were looking to sort of sell it on for retail purpose. But the rest of the car actually underneath is actually quite sound. I was actually quite impressed with it. Uh, the discs are actually coming up quite nice as well. The brakes and that, they are quite good. Um, I've mostly been around the site really briefly, but even then they were starting to clean up. So I'm not too worried about that couple of tyres for the front, get that suspension work done on the front and a rear spring on the back and that's pretty much it really uh, underneath. Obviously we'll change around do a service and it's just really just dealing with the paintwork on it. Um, to be honest with you, I've had a quick look online, the bumper, quite surprised how cheap I can get a bumper for one of them. You, you, the easiest thing to do would be just to get a bumper in colour because to have that painted, because it's a big old bumper as well guys, um, probably would cost me about 150, 200 quid to have that bumper done just by the sheer size of the bumper. But, I mean, I can probably get a bumper in colour. I had a quick look on eBay. I've seen a two or three on there. Anything was in sort of like 90 to 100 quid for a bumper. Now, I find it might have a few little marks on it, but we pick and choose, find the right one. It's not going to be the end of the world to get a bumper half decent. It would be a lot easier just to get that and bolt that on. If we can find a nice bumper, that would save us a bit of money. So, obviously, we'd look to order one of them. Um, also, the wings, I mean, if you're going to do all that work, give it a mop over as well. The car wants buffing completely, loads of little marks and scratches out on it. But I actually believe that 90% of those marks will come out, or whatever's left, you could probably just touch in slightly. It'll look actually a decent, presentable car at the end of it. That bumper just makes it look horrible. We need to get that sorted and order one of them. Give it a good buff over it, then it'll just leave the wings. The wings are quite badly corroded. You could have them fixed, you know, the paint man could do that, but obviously they'll come back through in a few years, and you know, it's not going to really with corrosion the best thing to do is just change the panel um i did have a look weigh the options up to be honest with you the wings aren't that dear either there's quite a lot in that color i've found some wings for second hand for around 75 quid a side um also there's a company online that will send you out new wings painted in the right color for about 157 quid plus the postage i think about 15 pound postage so there's a couple of options there how far you want to go with it um, I mean, 300 odd quid for two new wings painted. That's not bad, really. But, you know, we've got to be careful on the numbers here. I might just go down the route of just getting two second hand wings, particularly can find two half decent ones, bolt them on. Uh, like I said, get a second hand bumper as well, bolt that on. That will keep the paint down. That would save us having to take a trip to the paint shop um, and then just give it a buff over as well ourselves. And we'll probably get the, um, get the car off right without spending too much money on it. Sort of focus the rest of the money on doing the, the most important things like sorting out cam belt, sorting out suspension work and getting it for an MOT and servicing it. Now, working out those numbers briefly, we paid £900 for the Audi. A rear bumper would probably cost us, like I said, 90 to 100 quid, let's say £100. So we're on £1,000 there. We've got a spring. We need we need to get a spring for it. They're at 25 quid for a rear spring. We've got all the bolts and the suspension work for the front. That was less than 70 quid. Took in a service kit as well, and we barely spent over 1,200 quid. Oh, two tyres as well. Two tyres, we can put two half decent budget tyres on, 50 quid a piece for them, and we obviously will fit them ourselves. We've got the gear to do that here. So, really, I mean, what are we on? 1,300 quid before we tackle them wings? How far do you go with it? Let's just say we penny pinched a little bit and just bought two used wings and bolted them on and then mop the car up afterwards. To be honest with you guys, I can't really see us even spending 1,500 quid on this car to get it half right. And if we do, do that, get all that work done, check the wings, get the bumper on it, give it a mop over, polish the brains out of it, I think for less than 1,500 quid, we'll have a nice, tidy car. And then it's just a case of, do we then look at a cam belt situation? But if it is old and look a bit tated and looks a bit rough around the edges, well, obviously, we'll have to put a cam belt on it. But I think we'll get that back anyway, to be honest, because looking at the values of this, what would you get for it? Um, well, I think it's easily cleaned up with all the paintwork sorted on it. I think it's easily a 23, 2400 pound car all day long with a ticket on it. So, 140,000 miles, which for diesel this age, especially that with that Audi Volkswagen engine, and it's not really a, a high mileage car, to be honest. And I think the car will sell really well. Chuck a cam belt on it. I think you could even maybe ask for twenty four ninety five because that that peace of mind to people. You know, they all, everyone likes it when there's a cam belt being done, full MOT service. Everything's been done on it like that. People will sometimes pay about a little bit more just for that reassurance. So looking at the numbers, it's somewhere between sort of seven fifty to a thousand pounds in this potentially. Depends how far we go with it and how far, and if we go and if we change the cam belt. However, all these costings are a little bit immaterial because I actually have now sold the car. Um, quick backstory to it. One of the guys who works for me, he's been after this car as soon as it landed. He was interested in it. He's been banging on for months that he wants to buy an Audi diesel, particularly an A4. So I knew, I knew as soon as this car turned up that he'd be all over it, interested in it. Um, and I wasn't wrong either. He was, he's been in and out of it, messing about with it, having a look, asking me questions about it. And I'm like, oh, blimey, I know where this is going. And he's been after one of these for ages. Um, so like I said, I, I had a quick look around it first, make sure what we're up against. And to be honest with you, a little bit like that, because ultimately we're losing 
losing profit here. But, you know, he's a good lad. He's worked for me for many, many years and he wants the car. So I thought it was best off that uh, I do him a deal on that. Obviously, I'm not giving the car away because obviously I'm losing quite a lot of money, a lot of potential profit out of it. So we've done a deal. We've had the agreement that he buys the car as it is. Um, I basically just put to said to him, look, you can have the car. Twelve hundred pounds. You can have the car. It owes me nine. I've done nothing to it. All I've done is ordered a set of wishbone arms for it and the bolts, which you know I've had some luck. You can have them anyway. Um, you can have the car for twelve hundred quid. So we're on about two hundred and thirty, forty pounds profit out of it, because obviously we've already bought some of the parts, but I've included them in the deal. You can have them because they need fixing ASAP. Uh, and he said, yeah, he's happy with it. I mean, once he's done that, he'll obviously buy a couple of tires in house and put them on and get it for an MOT, and then obviously he can do the rest of the work at his own leisure. Uh, so that's what we're doing with this one, guys. It's been sold on to a member of staff. It's a bit awkward situation when this happens. Similar thing happened with father-in-law recently when he bought a Range Rover off me. I barely made anything on that at all, really. That was out of goodwill, but that's family, and you sometimes you have to bow down to family. But nonetheless, we've had a profit out of the car, 240 quid. Effectively, we haven't done anything to it. All we've done is all we've done is literally just walk around it and put it on a ramp. Uh, and sold it on someone else and made £240 profit. And someone else has got a car that they want. They're happy with it. So, thanks for watching this one, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It helps me out immensely. I'm back at the auctions this week, so check out that. That video is going to come out soon. We're also going to be going to visit some other auctions very, very soon as well. So, I'll talk about more about that in the future. Also, I've got loads of part exchanges. I've got so many cars here at the moment that I'm trying to film. So, please bear with me. I'm going to try and get this content out to you as quick as I can. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you all very, very soon.